Hello, good morning. My name is Jamal Khan. I'm the head of tax at Churchill Tax Advisors. Today is Monday, 30th of September, and we are doing our weekly tax uh, update. Uh, following from our previous uh, or last week's uh, update, when I spoke about property tax and tax planning for uh, landlords, uh, I spoke briefly about the uh, transferring properties into a limited company, uh, which which is becoming very which is a hot topic at the moment for landlords who have a uh, uh, number of properties with mortgages and the property uh, the, the the section twenty four rules, which restrict um, tax relief on mortgage interest. So a lot of landlords are resorting now. To, to transferring uh, properties into a limited company. Now, first, as, as I mentioned last week, there are two, a uh, couple of steps to follow. When you transfer a property into a limited company, a limited company is a separate legal entity. So, so it's, it's, it's uh, liable to capital gains tax and stamp duty. The way we get around capital gains tax is uh, to check if there's a trade uh, if the landlords are effectively managing the portfolio, say more than 20 hours a week, and that somewhat gives you uh, um, uh, relief from uh, capital gains tax. The next hurdle is stamp duty, which, which is more difficult, and there are a lot of anti avoidance provisions around stamp duty. Uh, so you've got to be very, very careful. Uh, some ways around stamp duty are to set up a partnership, run that for a couple of years, and then to transfer the uh, assets from the partnership into a limited company. Um, but there are anti-avoidance rules that can apply. But now we've, we've come to this stage, which we covered last week. Now the next, and during the last couple of days or last week, I've had uh, a large number of inquiries about from, from people um, uh, asking about more information on on um, people transferring properties into a limited company, advantages and disadvantages. I'll cover the advantages first, which, is, which are, yes, when you transfer into a limited company, uh, the first uh, advantage is that, uh, transfer properties into a limited company, the first advantage is that you will, uh, the companies can get full tax relief for in mortgage interest payments. Uh, and this is as yet, so as of yet, so, uh, the rules uh, for Section 24 only apply to individuals and not to limited companies. Um, but we don't know um, that whether this will apply to limited companies. These rules will be extended to limited companies in the future. So you've got to be careful because what happens is, yes, you, you make a decision to put a uh, property into a limited company. So you might have 10 properties and you transfer them into a limited company. Um, now. You might get tax relief for a while, but if the rules change, uh, that might you might be stuck uh, because you cannot get properties out of a limited company so easily. You have to pay a lot of tax, uh, capital gains tax, corporation tax, income tax, and stamp duty, etc., on the way out. So there are no exemptions as such uh, for getting properties out of, a, especially if the properties are worth a lot of money, more than £100,000, then, then you cannot get properties out of a limited company. Uh, one advantage is, yes, the properties uh, get re revalued or rebased for capital gains tax purposes on the way they go in, on when, when, when they go into a limited company. So, for example, if you bought a property for £50,000, now it's worth half a million pounds. Uh, when you put them into a limited company, they get rebased for half a million pounds. So when you come to sell the properties uh, in the limited company, um, you will your base cost will be half a million pounds. So if you sold it, if you transfer the property into a limited company, this is what a lot of landlords are coming to me for advice. Uh, you transfer it into a limited company at five hundred thousand, and you claim exemption from capital gains tax relief uh, from capital gains tax. And uh, when you sell it, say for example immediately after incorporation, um, then then there's no capital gains tax to pay which means you've just saved yourself a significant amount of capital gains tax. So this is one of the advantages, tax planning advantages for uh, putting properties into a limited company. However, there are bigger uh, uh, issues to cover. For example, as I mentioned, uh, the properties are stuck in a limited company. You cannot get them out. For example, if somebody has, say, four children or three children and they want to give properties to their children, um, they will they will struggle because the, the, the properties are stuck in a limited company now. They cannot give properties, they cannot distribute the properties to their children. 
Um, so that's, that's something to watch out for. Second uh, problem is that double taxation. So if you sell, say property receives, or if you sell one of the properties, property makes a capital gain, the company pays corporation tax or capital gains tax, um, and then you want to get the money out to yourself. So you've got to pay dividend tax on dividends, which is quite high now since the last couple of years. Uh, so you can end up paying double taxation, getting money out of a limited company. Uh, the third one that we watch out uh, for is, is inheritance tax. Um, with limited companies operating as investment, uh, uh, holding residential properties or investment properties, these are not trading companies. So the, there is the inheritance tax problem gets even bigger with, with uh, transferring properties into a limited company. Uh, there are some people, some advisors who say that, you yeah, know, it's treated as a trading company, but it can never be. A, pro, a, a company holding investment properties will always be an investment company. It will not be a trading company. Uh, so that, that's something that to watch out for. Say, for example, if the property, somebody's transferred their properties into a limited company, and if the properties, um, or let's say five million pounds, in 10 years time, the properties might be worth 10 million pounds or 15 million pounds. In that case, that person's estate has gone up and there will be significantly more inheritance tax on their debt. Uh, I will cover inheritance tax in my next few webinars or my uh, updates. Um, but there is a lot to consider. There's a lot to consider in, in property uh, tax planning and how to effectively uh, manage your estate and income tax and capital gains tax. Um, um, and I, if you've got any sp specific questions, you can call me, you can ask me, or you can email me. Now, coming back to the weekly case update, uh, this is the case of uh, Cliff versus HMRC. Uh, this was announced uh, a week or something ago. Uh, Mr. Cliff was um, a self-employed tax consultant, uh, and um, he had uh, offering his, he was been offering so offering his services to racehorse trainers, jockeys, breeders, etc. And uh, in his tax returns, along as long uh, uh, together with his his income from uh, tax advisory services, he was claiming loss relief for uh, he he called himself a, a dealer in in thoroughbreds, so th th thoroughbred horses, and he made losses. He claimed a lot of losses. Uh, HMRC started a tax investigation and uh, they found that uh, his claim for these uh, losses was he didn't actually have a, have a trade in, in, in thoroughbreds and he, this was just a made up. He went and appealed against the assessments and the discovery assessments and the penalties but he lost because obviously the, the trade doesn't exist. Uh, so HMRC can check when people claim loss reliefs uh, or, uh, against uh, their income. And, and I've seen quite a few cases because we deal with tax investigations. Uh, quite a lot of, a uh, large part of our business is tax investigations. We've seen a lot of people who've tried to falsely claim losses to mitigate their taxes. Uh, HMRC have caught up with them ultimately. Uh, the next one is um, Leeds Cricket Football Athletic Company Limited. Uh, this one is um, uh, the, the, the company sold a cricket ground, but there were a lot of uh, stalls around it and, and, and uh, that they were sold with, with, the, with the main cricket ground, which comprised a trade effectively. HMRC challenged that the trade did not exist, but uh, uh, the matter went to court and the judges decided that uh, the, the, the cricket stadium was, was not a standalone and then silvery services such as catering and other businesses and advertising etc were rec regarded altogether as one big 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 trade and therefore when the owners tried to claim uh, hold of a, a roller relief uh, that that was allowed. The, the main argument on this was that the owners tried to claim rollover relief and HMRC denied it but then it went to the court and, and this was allowed. If you like our videos, please uh, like, uh, please raise thumbs on on, on YouTube and uh, subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Thank you.